So one thing people always ask me about my quail is whether or not they need enrichment. And a lot of it I think is just for me um, having fun with them, but I do know when they're having a good time using their natural skills of scratching and looking for bugs and seeds. And so at the end of the year, especially when I'm bringing all my plants inside or there's plants that have died or plants that I'm not gonna overwinter, I will usually bring them into the quail enclosure and I'll put them inside. I've set up this cardboard box here from my work um, that I recycled and I just cut a hole on the end so they can get in more easily and I fill it with all kinds of stuff for them to play in so that's their like little play area. And this time I put in um, this plant that my boyfriend got me. Um, it was just an annual from the store and we had it on our front porch for the, for the season and then the frost came and it wasn't really something that I wanted to bring inside the house. And so I let it die and then I noticed that the wild birds were picking at it, picking the seeds out. And so today I brought it in for them to play with and I thought I would share it with you guys because it's, it's really fun to just give them things to do. They get kind of bored in here over the winter. As you can see it's not the biggest area for them. We've just set aside this part in our shed for them to play with. Um, I do a deep bedding method in which I just layer tons of layers of sawdust over the winter and that gives them a good place to walk around on that's not going to be cold. Um, the floor in here is concrete and uh, this will usually get about four or five inches deep uh, compacted by the end of the season and the reason I do this is because they're really really good at keeping themselves warm other than their feet. Um, they will usually all huddle together and even a, and uh, I usually try and keep this door shut as much as possible and uh, it's pretty warm today it's almost 50 degrees outside but in the dead of winter when it's close to zero or below zero the, I'll put up this heat lamp over here I have to get it cleaned off for the season but they're really good at keeping themselves warm even if it's like 25 30 degrees because they'll all huddle together they'll all kind of hide under each other's feathers and as long as their feet are warm and tucked under them they'll be fine but they have a lot of issues when they don't have something like this to stand on and so I've found that it's really important to give them a nice deep layer of insulation underneath them um, we will put up insulated panels over our windows um, I like to have these open for them in the summer because they like the sunlight um, but during the winter they don't it can get kind of dreary in here so the heat lamp helps um, with the light and everything but anyway I like to give them stuff to play with because as you can see they like to pick through it um, quail are not really great kitchen recyclers they don't eat kitchen scraps they don't eat anything like that they're not like a chicken but they do love seeds. They love looking through for bugs. Um, that's Rudy, my rooster. He will probably get that worm here if it, if it moves. Um, he loves playing and all this stuff. He loves uh, looking for things for his girls. The rest of them in here are hens. And these are my breeders. I have six breeders. I have one male. And what does she get stuck to her? Oh, she's got a leaf stuck to her. <laughs> Penelope always gets things stuck to her feet. Um, I'll help her in a second. <laughs> um, but if you're looking for something to give your animals, a, a lot of the time they don't need anything that we would consider fun. They just need something to do and something to occupy their time. And so really bringing out those natural instincts to scratch and look through the, through the I'll sometimes put leaves in here. They love looking through leaves for bugs. Um, they just love to look through through soil. They let, they'll probably take dust baths over here later once they get this more pulled apart. And uh, they love looking for little seeds and insects. So anything you can do to give them something to do over the winter is really important to keep them mentally stimulated and happy. It also get, makes them more active so they don't get fat because otherwise they get bored and all they want to do is eat. And uh, I've been trying to ration their food um, 
I have been trying to figure out kind of a happy medium of what to give them for the day because I don't like to fill the feeder unless we're going out of town or we're going to be gone for the day. I don't like to fill it up because we have a mouse problem, as many people do. They keep keep birds, and um, I've noticed that it's much easier to catch them in my bucket trap. As you can see over here, they run up the they run up the little ramp, and then they hit this uh, this wheel here. They try and run across. You can see where they've dug out my insulation over here. Um, and I've seen probably like 10 or 15 mice in here since it's gotten cold. They've moved in. And um, so I've been trying to mitigate that by only giving them enough food that they'll eat in one sitting. Um, they've kind of left a little bit, but there's really not a lot of excess in there. That'll probably be enough for today. I try and only give them enough to where by the time I come back to feed them again tomorrow, it'll all be gone. That way there's no excess for the mice to really eat. Um, because the mice will just sit there and eat and eat and eat and I'll come in. They'll all be around this, eating the food. And um, unfortunately, I can't. it doesn't really make a difference if I hang it or not. If I hang it, they will knock the feeder and make a big mess. And so it's just easier for me to keep it on the ground. Um... It doesn't really make a difference in keeping the mice out of it. The mice will jump up. I can't keep it any higher off the ground than what the mice can can uh, jump up and grab because they're not very tall and it just doesn't work. I've tried it before. I've tried different ways of hanging it, different ways of positioning everything to try and keep them out of it, and it really doesn't work. So now we're trying to ration the food and see if see exactly how much... They will eat in one day and then only giving them that. So you can see they're a little occupied right now, eating the the seed heads from this plant. I can't remember what the plant is. Um, my boyfriend got it on clearance. He saw it and he was like, I don't know. <laughs> he thought it was cool and he brought it home. And uh, he set it on our back patio and I was really concerned because I thought some like creepy person left me a gift. I had, no, I had no idea that he brought it home for me. And so I walked back here and there's a plant sitting on my table that I hadn't seen before. And I was, I was really concerned. I was like, did you leave me that back there? Because if not, then someone's been leaving me gifts and, you know, all these thoughts that go through your head as a woman. <laughs> Um, that's, I have been stalked before multiple times when I used to live in the, in a bigger city and it's, it really makes you on edge once you experience something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, if you have any questions about them, I'll answer them in the comments and, uh, always happy to help. Uh, I, uh, these particular quail are Japanese coat, Cortinix quail. It's a little difficult to say. Um. But they're Japanese quail. This is uh, as big as they get. They're not as big as as the bobwhite quail, but they mature a lot faster. They they max out their weight at about eight to nine weeks, and they generally start laying a little bit after that. So a lot quicker turnaround than chickens. And. Uh, for the rest of the video, for maybe like two minutes, I'll let you guys watch them and enjoy them and just see how cute they are doing their thing. <laughs> My rooster is down in there. He's down in this. He's the one right here. He's not shy at all. He's very, uh, his personality is really cool. He's, he's pretty friendly as far as, as a quail goes. Same with these three. These three are the ones that are very domesticated. I can pick them up and they really don't try and get away. Meanwhile, these three over here are a lot more skittish and not as easygoing. But... They'll pick this apart later. They'll probably I'll come out and they'll all be dust bathing in here together. <laughs> and it's just really cool when you have animals, especially animals that are more of a wild animal. It's always nice to give them something that expresses their natural instincts. 
and gives them something to do during the day other than just sitting in a cage. I like having my quail in more of an aviary, um, large enclosure. They do a lot better that way, in my opinion, than being stuck in a cage or being in some kind of racking system. I don't really like to do that. Um, these six are my veteran quail. These are the ones I've had for three years, a um, little over three years. And these ones, um, they've stopped laying for now, but they lay about an egg a day still. Their production really hasn't dropped too much in the couple years that I've had them. They're pretty consistent. But we'll collect usually about a about 30 eggs and do a run every year of their chicks and then we'll butcher them when they're about 10 weeks old put them in the freezer and I could do more if I wanted to but it just gets time consuming I don't have multiple incubators so trying to do a couple runs at a time is a little overwhelming I could run the incubator constantly but We've been doing house renovations, so that's not really high on the priority list. I actually gave them a break this year, and we didn't do any this year. I just kept them, and gave them a year off. And one thing I've noticed is that once they get to about a year old, they're not as good of eating anymore. They're a lot more tender and tasty when they're younger than when they're older. I uh, dispatched three males that I had last year that were about a year old and I don't know, the meat really wasn't that good. It, it had a funny taste to it and I don't know what that was from but they just really weren't, they weren't really the greatest eaten. But <laughs> So uh, if you're gonna do them for meat and eggs I would suggest uh, doing all the roosters at about 10, 10 weeks, maybe a little bit more. You can kind of gauge depending on what their weight is. But definitely don't keep them a long time. And make sure you separate out the roosters when they start to get aggressive because they will, they will overbreed and harass your females once they uh, reach sexual maturity. And uh, they'll pull all their feathers out of their head. And I actually had one female a year and a half ago that died because she was pretty much the lowest on the pecking order. And they just harassed her for like probably an entire day. And her head was all purple and awful. And she had basically like brain damage. And she just, her head was all swollen up and she died. I found her dead in the cage. And. I felt really, really bad. Um, so if you have too many males, or even if your male starts to get aggressive with your females, if you don't have enough females for your male to occupy himself with, uh, it's good to separate them during the height of breeding season because they will get aggressive and they will just chase them around all day trying to breed them. And it's nice to give your hens a little rest here and there. But like I said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. I'll get back to you right away. Um, I'm pretty new to YouTube, so I don't have a lot of followers. So I'll get the notifications and see them right away and get back to you. But I hope you found this interesting. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it because they're, they're really fun to watch and just really cool little animal. They're a great addition to a homestead. All right, so thank you for watching my video. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, leave it in the comments and see you in the next video. <laughs>